and the injury bug just keeps lingering on for the Flyers. Uh, is it now you have more injury updates and also uh, a uh, loan update as well um, on forward Samu to Amala. So let's uh, let's break this down, shall we? Um, so the Flyers they tweeted this afternoon uh, transactions we've recalled defenseman Nick Sealer from the Phantoms uh, and they loaned forward Samu to Amala from the Phantoms uh, to Carpot of the Finnish Liga. So, uh, as many of you probably remember, um, I had covered development camp. And as of covering development camp, that went into training camp and all that stuff. So, uh, my original thoughts on Tuamalo was the fact that I thought he looked good in certain parts of camp. Majority of those things that I saw that were good from him were essentially the one-on-one -on -one drills where he could showcase his shot and, and that was really it. He just wasn't necessarily there yet um, from translating his game from the Finnish style over to the North American game and everything along those lines. Um, for him to come here, not speak a lot of English, have a pretty decent camp. He didn't look great, but he didn't look horrible either. Um, definitely would like to see more of him. I thought he looked really good in the first rookie game uh, that the Flyers ended up playing where they won 6-3 in Terrytown. Um, but besides that, that really wasn't much. He didn't really translate that over to the second game. They're on Sunday. Um, and yeah, so now he's going to the back home to Liga when he could have went to the OHL. Now he made the Phantoms out of camp and that was surprising to me because again, I didn't necessarily think he looked great, but I figured, okay, let's see what he does in a couple games. He only played two games and then he was just, you know, didn't play, was in the press box, everything. I don't, I didn't necessarily understand why they did this now when this could have been done a while ago. Um, I had talked about it on Friday with Bill Meltzer. I covered Flyers Warriors uh, and, and the Warrior Classic the entire weekend. So I was there with Bill and a bunch of stuff. And um, I had asked him, you know, do does it make sense to you that Tuamala is down with the Phantoms right now and he's not playing he's like no I, I personally thought he should have got sent down and everything so again uh, I agree and and you know again um this is a tweet here from Bill he said Tuamala made it clear that he wanted to play in a pro league since he didn't look ready for AHL yet it will be Liga I'd have preferred OHL he probably got ice time in in uh five games in Liga for Carpot last season uh, I don't know that he'll see a lot of time off the bat they are a very deep team so um yeah that's obviously not great either. I personally had figured that he would have went down to the OHL as well. Um, I guess sending him home, maybe he wanted to go home. I don't know if that was maybe player driven or what. Maybe he had asked. I'm not sure if, 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 if it works like that. But um, again, I personally thought he would have made the OHL. He made the AHL. And you know, this could be a good thing. It, it, you know, it might be a blessing in disguise for him. Maybe he picked up a lot of stuff here and was able to try to translate that over to his game. And now he's able to go home and show it. Um, but again, it just does, it does question it for me, like, why was it done now and why did it take them this long? And two, why did he only play two games? I mean, the Phantoms are struggling. Um, they've played a handful of games. They haven't necessarily looked good. They only have two wins and, you know, it, it's been a rough start to the season so far and just about everybody is struggling for them. So that was, that was, you know, it's getting worrisome with, with Lehigh Valley. And I talked about this with Jerry Wallach on Don't Panic and, and I completely agree with you know, you're even what we've kind of both said is the fact that it's starting to get a little worrisome with the Phantoms and the fact that they've only won two games and a lot of guys are struggling and things like that, but we'll see what happens. But um, as for the injury updates for the Flyers, um, Kevin Hayes, Ryan Ellis, they're still out for a good amount of time. Next Tuesday um, is the earliest for Hayes. Next Tuesday's game, if you're looking at the Flyers schedule, uh, would be November 16th against Calgary at home. So you have three more games then for Hayes. That would be the earliest um, for Hayes to come back. Ellis is possible for tomorrow, but he's still basically day-to-day. -day. Um, the, the defensive pairs of practice today were Provorov and Braun, Sanheim and Ristolainen, and Yandel and Ellis. Uh, and Nick Silo was taking reps with Nicholas Albi Cabell. That's per Jordan Hall from NBC Philly. Um, and again, that makes... A little more sense, I guess, because I had maybe figured if Ellis, like, I, I was thinking about it, and I'm like, okay, well, I looked at these pairs and thinking to myself, all right, maybe they're just trying to ease him into it, and that might be what they're doing. They said that, um, it was tweeted that if Ellis does play tomorrow, he's most likely going to be with Yandel, and they're going to keep Provorov with Braun, Sanheim with Ristolainen. 
they want to, I guess, ease him into it. They don't want to throw him in the top minutes and things like that right away. Um, because again, I think they want to get him in the lineup, but he's probably not at that state where he's 100% healthy, but he's still able to play. Um, I personally would rather them do it the other way around. If he's 100% healthy, then let him play. I would rather wait. Again, the Flyers are playing well. I don't think there's necessarily any reason to rush him back. And if you've been doing this the entire time now and they're still playing well, don't rush him back if he's not 100% healthy. I know you want to ease him into it, but I would rather him just come and play, you know, first first pair instead of playing third pair. But then again, I would still wouldn't mind him playing regardless. Anyway, so we'll see what happens there. Obviously, tomorrow is going to be the, the big test for that. He could play tomorrow, um, but he's still basically day to day. So we'll see. It, I, I, I probably very likely that Ellis does play tomorrow. But nevertheless, let me know your guys' thoughts below on Tuamala. Again, very strange move, um, and I'm surprised it took this long. But anyway, podcast articles, those links are on my channel. hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.